Have you ever had a job that was so bad you actively repressed all your memories of it to the point where you forget it even happened? Because that happened to me, apparently. A few months ago, I posted this video talking about a bad commission story that happened when I was in high school. And in that video, I said something along the lines of, I'm probably not going to make any more videos like this because I don't have any more bad commission stories. And then the morning after I posted that video, I woke up and suddenly all the memories came flooding back into my brain. And I remembered the horrible experience I had at my very first art job, my actual first art job, not the educational company one I've mentioned in past videos. This one came before that. Again, repressed memories. I forgot it even happened. Wee. And while that doesn't sound like a bad commission story, trust me, we'll get there. <laughs> this is a two-in-one combo, bad job and bad commission story. Buckle the heck up. I haven't thought about this job in nearly a decade, but just thinking about bad art-related experiences recently must have knocked something loose in my brain, and suddenly all the bad memories came spilling out. My brain really said, this job is not worth remembering. Throw it out with the trash and be done with it. Spend no more thoughts on this experience. But here's the thing, brain. I tell weird stories on this channel, and this one counts. So we're making a video about it. Deal with it. So let's dive into this forgotten piece of Star Lord together, friends, and discuss my horrible, terrible, very bad, very first art job. Job in heavy air quotes for reasons we'll get into. But first, real quick, let's do Hey Star, What You Drawin? The art in the background is some new promotional art for my webcomic Cast Off I did to promote Cast Off being added to Tapas's early access program. You can read Cast Off at castoff-comic.com as well as on Tapas and Webtoon. But if you read on Tapas, you can unlock pages early with their early access feature. It's a cool way to see early pages and support the comic if you can't afford to join the Patreon. Links to that are all down in the description. Okay, back to the video. So first, let's set the scene. It was the spring of 2014. I had just finished college and moved back in with my parents where I was working on using my shiny new art degree to try and snag myself a career in the animation industry. Every day I would wake up, plop down on the couch with my laptop, spend a day applying for animation and story artist positions, sending in job applications, tweaking my resume, working on new pieces for my portfolio, then go to sleep that night and repeat the process the next day. This is what my life was like for the first full month out of college. And after all that time and after all that work, I got nowhere, nothing, not a zilch, big ol' zero. I kept trying, kept applying for more jobs, thinking that maybe I was just having bad luck because I graduated a few months early and places weren't looking for fresh graduates for the summer season yet. So I spent more time applying for more jobs, doing more fixes to my resume and making more tweaks to my portfolio. I scoured job sites for any kind of work my degree qualified me for, and I came up short each time. I set up alerts so I'd get an email whenever a new job I was qualified for was posted, and my inbox remained super empty. My relationship with my parents got pretty tense. They were constantly asking me how many applications I had submitted. Why hadn't I gotten any calls yet? What was I doing wrong? Because I was obviously doing something wrong if I hadn't had a single bite on my resume yet. We fought a lot. And no matter how much work I did, no matter how many of these jobs I applied for, nothing was working. No one wanted to hire me. No job would even give me the time of day. About a month and a half into this process, I started applying for random part-time jobs around town. Something I could do that would earn me some extra money, something that would give me something to do every day that wasn't just applying for jobs day in and day out. I sent in applications for a few places and eventually got a call from a restaurant, my local Bees Lake Phylactery. As always, I'm censoring their name because I don't want them to come after me, deal with it. While I wasn't super excited about doing food service, it would at least be something that could earn me some money I could put in savings. I went into training for a few days, and then on the last day of training, and after finishing my very first dinner shift, I was exhausted and cleaning the floors of the bakery area and just broke down crying. All the pressure I was under from trying to find a job and my parents coming down on me really hard and the fact that I had just spent three and a half years at an art school had ultimately amounted to nothing, just hit me like a freaking truck. I stood there looking down at the dirty restaurant floor and a thought came into my head. This is what the rest of my life is gonna be like, isn't it? And whoo boy, that's a bit dark. <laughs> I've mentioned this in other videos, but yeah, the six or so months after graduating college were hands down the worst six months of my life. 
I was extremely depressed, separated from most of my friends, feeling absolutely worthless and inadequate, and working a minimum wage food service job just so I wouldn't be a leech on society. I wanted to take some time to highlight all that because it's going to add some additional context to the rest of the story. The main bit being that desperation will make you do things you wouldn't have done otherwise. When I first started searching for art jobs, I pretty much ignored all the jobs that didn't offer pay. Unpaid internships were predatory and miserable, and I knew that. But when you're put in a position where nothing else has worked, sometimes you're willing to take a hit if it means getting your foot in the door. My logic back then was, all these places must be ignoring me because I have no experience. So if I can get some work experience under my belt, I'll be more attracted to potential recruiters. Even if the work was unpaid, I was desperate enough to take it. So once I started my food service job, I worked there in the evenings and spent my daytime hours of still applying for more jobs. I went back over my search criteria and started sending out applications to everything, even unpaid positions. It felt awful, but again, I was desperate. I just needed something, anything to put on my resume. And in less than a week, I got the phone call. Hello? Hello, is this Star? Yes? Who is this? This is I see you applied for an animator position at our company. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Y yes, I did. Well, we had a chance to look over your application. Yes? And unfortunately, we weren't super impressed with your work. Oh. We think that you have a lot of potential, but we can't offer you a paid position at this time. Uh, however, we do have a training program in our company if you're interested in that. It's unpaid, but we'd be giving you some additional work that can help build up your reel and work experience. I'll do it. Excellent. I'll send you an email with more information. The guy was the owner of a startup company in town doing animations and 3D graphics and whatever other work contracts they could get their hands on. Apparently they had a handful of actual employees who were on a payroll, but they also had a bunch of unpaid interns that had the potential to move up and get added to the payroll if they did well and the company could eventually afford it. Looking back on it now, I can see all the red flags as clear as day, but again, I was desperate and this was the closest thing to a job offer I had gotten in the several months I'd spent applying for jobs. It wasn't paid, but it was work I could put on my resume, and if that's what would eventually lead to an actual studio job, then dang it, I was gonna give it a shot. So, quick sidebar. When I told my mom about the topic for this video, she asked if I was going to mention the other unpaid internship offer I got from another company. And then I asked her, what are you talking about? Because apparently some parts of this story are so repressed that I have just forgotten them entirely. I still don't really remember this next part very well, but my mom says she remembers that I got another offer from a company in LA within a week of the local internship offer. It was similar, an unpaid internship for a small company, but it was closer to the type of work I wanted to be doing. Animations and graphics work for ads and other media projects. And while the LA job was really tempting, it was in LA. I was in Texas, meaning that I'd be expected to relocate for, again, an unpaid internship. We scrambled for a bit trying to figure out if it was even possible. I had some family members in California, so maybe I could couch surf for a few months. Maybe if I could find a roommate, I could live off my savings for a while. In the end, I ended up staying in Texas and taking the local internship, but now I'm thinking about how my life might have been different if I had actually moved out to California for an unpaid internship. Interesting to think about. Anyway, back to the story. My first impression of my new internship was, in a word, messy. They had a physical office space, but they apparently had moved several times in the last few months and their website wasn't up to date. And while trying to figure out where to go for my first meeting with them, I was given no less than three different locations that all ended up being incorrect. During email exchanges, I was passed around between multiple people repeatedly because no one seemed to have a full grasp of who I was supposed to be working with and who was in charge of delegating tasks to me. Overall, they seemed very disorganized to the point where I was starting to get frustrated and hadn't even done any actual work for them yet. But again, the rose-colored glasses of desperation. I was determined to make this work. My first time actually meeting the people in person was during one of their weekly meetings. I ended up taking that night off work at my food service job every week so I could attend these meetings. 
After a lot of back and forth, they finally got me the correct address and they had an office building not far from where I lived, so I put on a nice outfit and drove over there. I finally got to meet the people I had been emailing in person, along with all the other employees. There was the head of the company, who was maybe in his mid to late 20s, three or four other dudes, and something like six to eight other unpaid interns. I remember seeing them all for the first time and realizing they were all probably in the same boat I was, artists trying to get work to put on their resume so they can apply for better jobs. I never really talked to them as we were all working on different projects, but I kind of wish I had. I was never good at networking though. Anyway, after my first meeting with the group, my main thought was, this guy in charge has no business sense whatsoever. The first project they put me on was a little animation project that wasn't actually for a client, it was for their company's demo reel. They needed an example of 2D animation work so that they could start advertising themselves to potential 2D animation clients. But they were making their unpaid interns do it and not the actual employees, so does it really count as a demo reel for the company at that point? I'm gonna be real with you, I don't think it does. And you wanna know where they stuck me? an animator on this project? That's right, they put me in charge of photography because they wanted to use photos for the backgrounds. I wasn't even a photographer. I had no experience in photography, lighting. I didn't even have a camera aside from my phone camera, but that's what they tried to get me to do. I did my best, it wasn't good, and then they stuck me on something else. The next thing they gave me was working on assets for their website. They wanted to make their website more dynamic and add some illustrations to make it more attractive and inviting for potential clients. So they had me draw what basically amounted to gajinkas of different art software. If you're unfamiliar with the term, a gajinka is basically taking something that isn't human and designing it as if it were a human like the shark girl designs I did, or the website says cute anime girl memes, or humanized Pokemon designs type things. And I was doing that for art software, for a company that was doing professional art for large scale corporate businesses. Except here's the thing, most of the projects they were taking were 3D visualization projects for engineering firms and medical tech, and they wanted to put anime girls on their website. I just, what was the goal here? What were you trying to accomplish? What was the point of all this? Uh. Suffice to say, it didn't take long for me to grow dissatisfied with my job there. I was still applying to jobs in my free time, now with this internship on my resume, and Nothing changed. I still wasn't getting any calls. I was putting myself through all this work, all this, for lack of a better word, stupidity for no reason, and I wasn't even getting paid. Honestly, I should have left sooner. I should have seen this place for what it was and bowed out after that first meeting. But even though my patience is wearing thin, the desperation still remained, and I am nothing if not stubborn. So this continued for a few more months. During the day, I'd send out job applications, at night I'd work my restaurant job, and once a week I would attend meetings for my internship. I'd grit my teeth and do whatever stupid thing they asked me to do in the hopes that maybe someday I'd get a call from one of the places I actually wanted to work. This continued for a few months, and then during one of our weekly meetings, she showed up. Now, I won't be saying her real name, obviously, but for the sake of the story, let's call her, I don't know, Becky. So the details around Becky are a little fuzzy because again, repressed memories from almost a decade ago. I can't remember if she was a new hire and one of the other interns like us doing social media marketing or something, or if she was a client hiring a company I was working for to do work for her. I wanna say it was the latter, but I really have no idea. It could go either way. In fact, it may have even been both now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe she was doing social media in exchange for the company helping her with her business. I, I have no idea. Becky was a California to Texas transplant, the type of person the Texans love to complain about moving to Austin for the live music scene and then driving up rent prices. Blonde, very perky, extroverted, nicely dressed and very feminine, very into social media and had major hashtag influencer vibes. At the very first meeting she attended, she introduced herself as a social media influencer and a music YouTuber, talking about her achievements on various platforms, how she'd been featured on all of these major publications, 
and how her first music video she released had gone viral to the tune of over a million views. And she was hoping to work alongside the company to create more music videos and other peripherals for her internet presence. More music videos, skits, and even comics. And when I heard that, my ears perked up. Because as you can probably gather from the everything about me and my content, comics are kind of my thing. In fact, I almost went to school for comics instead of animation, but my mom talked me out of it and said that an animation degree would be more useful in the long run. So when Becky mentioned she wanted to do comics, well, you can say she had my attention. I had been working a dead-end food service job alongside a dead-end unpaid internship for months with no end to either on the horizon. But suddenly this girl, this self-professed influencer YouTube musician with millions of views had descended and given me hope for a project that was actually promising. After the meeting was over, I ended up talking to her and telling her I had lots of experience with comics. This was after my first webcomic, but before starting Cast Off, by the way and that I was interested in possibly working with her on a comic project. She was thrilled, and we exchanged contact info so we could continue discussing the project afterwards, what she wanted, her ideas for the series, and even pay. And I'll admit, I was hopeful, excited even. An actual comic project with a big internet name behind it might be the kick my resume needed to actually start getting proper job offers. And she was going to actually be paying me. For the first time in months, I was starting to feel hopeful, starting to feel optimistic about the future. The thing with Becky, though, was she wasn't actually as big or impressive as she made herself sound. She had posed herself as a big deal, talked a big talk, and gassed herself up in her self-introduction to all of us. And then I looked her up after the meeting. Her music video she was so proud of did have over a million views, which was impressive. But it had gone viral because it was bad. Very bad. The show all your friends so you can laugh at how bad it is type of bad. The Rebecca Black Friday type of bad viral music. And other people posting negative reaction videos to it had been where most of the views had come from. Becky had apparently done this on purpose, though, and was now determined to make being bad at music and making cringy music videos into her personal brand, to the point where she wanted her haters to be the antagonist of the comic she wanted me to do. But as for everything else, she had a few other videos on her page, most of which hadn't gone over a few hundred views, and despite the huge breakout hit her music video was, she was sitting at only about 4,000 subscribers. She was claiming to be a huge YouTube star, and she couldn't even monetize her videos. Her Twitter had more followers, close to 20,000 even, but none of her posts got any kind of engagement. Maybe one like, no retweets, hardly anything. Which, to me, reads like her relatively large following is probably mostly made up of bots and bot followers. I know how this looks, a bigger creator punching down. I don't want this to come off like I'm bullying her or anything. I absolutely don't. It's just, you know, kind of gives off a weird wannabe influencer vibe when you're making yourself sound like a big deal and you don't actually have the audience to back it up. But I mean, whatever, right? Back then I was a nobody. At the time, I probably had 200 Twitter followers, maybe more on Tumblr, but nothing even close to 4,000. So even though she wasn't actually as impressive as she made herself sound, I was still impressed and still very excited to work on the comic project with her. So we exchanged a few emails, texted back and forth for a bit, and eventually agreed to meet up for lunch to discuss the project in more detail. We went for lunch at this nice Italian place and spent almost three hours talking, me drawing out ideas in my sketchbook, discussing plot points and ideas, until we eventually decided on the scope of the project. We'd be starting with a shorter 16-page comic issue that Becky could print and sell, as well as eventually making a motion comic video version that she could post on her channel with simple animations and voice acting. She'd said she'd get back to me in a few days with a contract, as well as letting me know her budget once she had time to go over a few things. I left that lunch feeling good, feeling positive, feeling hopeful. And I rode that high for the next few days until Becky finally got back to me. Hey, girl. So I like finally had time to go over everything. I got a bunch of pictures for the type of art style I want, some cool outfit ideas, and some pictures you can use as reference. Of course, there's like a ton of other references on my channel. 
obviously. I'll keep looking up some more stuff, but this should be a good baseline for you to get started. Okay, great. I'll take a look at it. Perfect. Oh, and also, I attached a contract that we can both sign that goes over the budget and terms for the project. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, how much is your budget, by the way? Did you decide on a number? All right. Well, for the full 16-page issue, I can pay you $200. Uh, oh, uh, um... Plus 20% from any YouTube revenue that comes from it. it. Yeah, sounds, uh, great. Wonderful. So once you sign the contract, just send that back to me and we'll get started. Talk to you soon. So, in case it wasn't obvious, this is what the kids would call a bad deal. While page rates can fluctuate depending on the budget of the project, comic pages can cost anywhere from $100 to $200 each if you're doing pencils, inks, and colors. And that's not including writing the script, doing the cover, etc. Comics are a lot of work and pages take a lot of time, and while this was a small indie project that wasn't going to have the same budget as a release from a major publisher, $200 for a 16-page comic book comes out to less than $15 per page. And considering each comic page would take anywhere from 4 to 10 hours to finish, we're talking about me making less than $2 per hour. While it was still better than the $0 per hour I was getting from my internship, this was the one hurdle I couldn't jump. I decided I wasn't going to put up with this. I emailed Becky back and very politely explained that while I was still interested in working on the project, I couldn't do the entire 16-page comic for the price she gave me. I made her a counter offer that I'd be willing to do the first four pages for that much, which was about $50 per page, still too low but significantly better than before, and she could post those for her audience and we could use that to gauge interest for future continuation. I made it very clear that I was still open to working and negotiating with her, but that I unfortunately couldn't work on such a large project for such low pay. I waited two weeks. She never responded to my email. And that was the last I ever heard from her. This proved to be a bit of a wake-up call for me. I don't remember exactly what happened next as the memories are, again, old and unclear, but I'm pretty sure I just stopped going to internship meetings after that told my restaurant job they could start scheduling me on Wednesday nights again, kept applying for more jobs, tried to network with other artists in town, went to meetups, talked to people, none of it really panned out. Until at the very end of summer, six months after I graduated and my job search began, I applied for an illustrator job at an educational company. And I got rejected. But then they opened another position and I applied again and got in the second time and I was finally able to quit my dumb food service job and move on with my life. The drought was finally over, and even though that job wasn't perfect or exciting, it was an art job that was actually paying me. And by the following spring, I had come out of my post-graduation funk enough and decided to start working on a new webcomic called Cast Off. And it's all downhill from there, baby. <laughs> and this job is a little weird to reflect on nowadays, considering the trajectory my career has taken since I graduated. When I first left art school, I was so desperate to get a professional studio job that I put myself through an extremely stupid waste of my time unpaid internship just for the chance of it looking better on my resume. Even while I was working at my first real paid art job, I kept applying to studios when positions opened up. I spent all of my 20s trying so hard to claw myself into an industry I wanted to be part of so badly. I wanted to create things, I wanted to tell stories, and I wanted to share those stories with people. But at some point, I realized I don't have to work at a studio to do that. To this day, I've never worked an actual art studio job. And honestly, at this point, I don't feel like I need to. Admittedly, a small part of wanting to work at a studio was the validation that, yes, I am a good enough artist to get hired to make these cool things that I love. Validation that I was good enough to help make something and tell a story. But thanks to the internet, I've been able to do all that anyway. And I can tell my own stories my own way and share it with the world on my terms. And although being an independent artist is hard, like crazy freaking hard, it's also really rewarding. My artist career has been unconventional and it's definitely not a path that would have worked out for everyone but it worked out for me and I'm really grateful to be here. So thanks for having me, everybody. I hope we can keep this up for a while. Hey pal, 
Pals, I've got a few updates to close out the video, so stick around for some news. Firstly, Cast Off is finally back from summer hiatus, which means that new pages are once again being posted every Monday and Friday. Links to all the pages you can read the comic are down in the description. Secondly, I have a few conventions coming up. This coming weekend, I'll be in Dallas for Anime Fest 2023, selling my art in the Artist Alley. And the cool part about Anime Fest is that you don't have to buy a com badge to shop in the Artist Alley. So if you wanted to, I don't know, come meet me and say hi and maybe buy some of my stuff. You can do that for free. Just saying, Dallas friends, wink. <laughs> I've also got Bell County Comic Con in Belton happening the weekend after, so I'm doing two Texas cons two weeks in a row. Wahoo! Hope this dress doesn't kill me. Yay! <laughs> also, big shout outs to my pals Mega Ron and Wild Jinx for lending me their voices for this video. The two of them are my fellow players in the D&D series What's Left of Us. Things are getting really intense on the show recently, and there might be some PvP in the next episode. <laughs> I love that Ron was nice enough to voice a character in one of my videos, and in a few weeks, I'm probably going to kill his D&D character. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> if you're interested in finding out more about that whole situation, please consider checking out What's Left of Us at youtube.com slash thejaycorn. Link's in the description. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. Bye.